Do you know, I was waiting for a bus in Western Supermarket. I was waiting for a bus, I was. And there's thousands waiting for the bus. And I, and I was busting for a piddle. I was busting for a piddle, I was. I thought, if I go for a piddle and get in the back of that queue, I'll never catch a bloody bus. Well, I was lucky. There's a wood fence behind the bus stop with a knot hole. Exactly the right height to piddle through. I thought if I was going to get them through that knot hole and piddle, all these people would think I'm looking in the woman's garden, see. And I got them through, and some bugger caught hold of them on the side. And they put a Jubilee clip on it. And the little voice said, I want a pound out, I'm going to cut your cock off. <laughs> when I look over, there's three boys over there. One about 12, one about seven, and one about four. I said, how much have you made today threatening to cut people's cocks off? He said, I've made 647 pounds. Bastard. I said, how much have you made? He said, I've made 19 pounds. Well, the poor little bugger, he's only four. He never had any money at all. I said, you haven't done quite so well, have you? <laughs> no, he said, I got a bucket full of cocks. <laughs> and then the bus stopped. I don't know why the bus stopped. I don't know why the bus stopped, because nobody got off and the bus was full and nobody got off. I don't know why the bus stopped. Well, I went upstairs, there was one empty seat, just one, and I sit down, and a woman come to sit beside me, Christ! Her ass was that wide. Right. I thought, I hope people don't think that's my wife. Because she had the biggest tits I ever seen. Of course, my wife had big tits, but the kids had them. <laughs> but Denzel, Denzel's missing. She wants silicone tits, she do. Denzel said, don't waste your money on silicone tits. Just take a bit of paper and keep rubbing up between them and rub up between them and just keep it rubbing up between them. She said, well, that make them bigger. She said, I've done a very good job to your ass. <laughs> but that's nothing to do with the story at all. That's nothing to do with the story. I don't know why I tell you that, because that's nothing to do with the story at all. <laughs> then this stupid woman, she started talking to me. Christ. And she stink of Swarthiga as well. <laughs> Christ. Then she started talking. She said, are you local? I said, I am when I'm home. <laughs> she said, do you think anybody'd notice if I was going to break wind? <laughs> well, why involve me? It's nothing to do with me, is it? I said, it's your house. Do whatever you like. Christ, then I thought, hell, if she do, all these people are going to think I done that, aren't they? I said, hold your hat steady, for Christ's sake. I said, have you got to do it? She said, I got her now. She said, it's already in the departure leg. <laughs> well, look, I said, we'll work together. If I'm going to have the fault for this, if they aren't going to think the lady done it, I'll cough. Well, and you leave her go when I'm coughing. You leave her go when I'm coughing. She said, how long can you cough for? Right, so I said, how big is it for Christ? And she was definitely, she was definitely going to do it because her eyes was watering. She was going to do it. I said, look, hold your house for a second. 
And when we get to the bottom of the next hill, the driver will change gear. Ah, ah, ah. If you can leave her go as he change gear, nobody will ever hear it. And if you don't smell too bad, Christ, if this don't work, I mean, this shit, I... There's even people standing up. I said, when we put this clutch in, I should say, have her, and you leave her go. But well, I got them to low as I could. Christ, it's nothing doing me. I don't even know the stupid cow. And she's standing up, and half her ass is hanging over the seat. So it's been echo up that aisle like a bloody thunderbox. And She's good, and she's nearly laughing the faster. I said, hold your hat, steady. I said, say, have her, and you leave her go. <laughs> Any time, hold your hat, steady. Are you ready? Have her. My Christ, hell. Hell. I can honestly say, I never heard a quieter gear change ever in my life. <laughs> he, even the driver looked proud of what he's done. <laughs> and, and everybody stopped talking. There's nobody talking, nobody talking. You couldn't talk, you couldn't draw breath. <laughs> You think she ate a ferret. <laughs> and somebody said, that fat bugger with a beard, he does it. <laughs> and I never done it. And bloody stinking. <laughs> I never smelled nothing so rotten, never, ever. And I've been all over the world. Exeter, Newton, Abbott, Oak, Hampton. <laughs> it bloody rotten. And I felt terrible sorry for the conductor. My heart went out to that poor bugger in all this stink. He's a black man and he had the biggest nostrils I ever saw. <laughs> that poor bugger, he's sucking in twice as much as everybody else he was. But I, I thought I'll just say something to the conductor to break the silence. Perhaps he won't smell so bad if people is talking, because he thought I'd done it as well. Mine was bloody stinking. But I thought I'll just say something just to start the conversation, just to break the house like. But what he thought I'd done, I don't know. Because I said, excuse me, I'm very sorry to bother you, but if you got a timetable that I could have, have you? But he said, I haven't got a timetable. But he said, I'll open the window and try to grab a handful of leaves for him. 